Listen, my back, another dish. How we doing out there? Good, great, grand, and yand, and yand, wonderful. So I know you guys haven't seen a whole lot of me yet or lately because I told you, unless I'm doing something important, talking to someone, something that you may not know about, I just ain't doing it. Listen, I'm I'm not going to review the Marvel shit for you, okay? They have people for that. They got enough people for that. So I try to bring, you know, things you may not know about, things that I deem special. So. If I'm here today, you know it must be special. It must be important. Today is uh, a show I've had a guest or I've had this guest on before. Uh, so if you want to hear about his come up, inspirations, everything like that, you can go back and listen to the other episode. We're not going to be doing that today. Or if you just hate me and the sound of my voice, uh, you can go to even.biz and check out his documentary and you can see his come up that way, which is probably far more entertaining than what I'm going to be able to give to you. So, uh, recently this gentleman released it, just a top to bottom flawless album it's called three i know myself and the fans have been salivating for this one ever since he announced it and folks he did not disappoint this man is a lyrical genius he's the very definition of a storyteller and he's telling stories that i want to hear uh from a perspective that i think is truly unique and one that we all uh need to hear and see right now especially some of you youngins out there believe me when i tell you that this album hits different in the best of ways it's filled with soul it's filled with passion references uh, movie references uh, for a nerd like me like you know don't uh have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight love that <laughs> the fact that he was able to put together 21 tracks and not get stale along the way is amazing or 25 to 27 depending on uh, if you count when the beat changes on a couple of them that he just so smooth with it anyway you can find this album on even.biz right now even.biz even.biz where all the money goes to the artists and not some out of touch record executive that you know is paying these guys a, a quarter of a cent for every it would take him a billion streams to get a dollar so knowing that my uh, money is going directly to him is great and when you go to this uh -huh. when you donate on even.biz I just want you to know you get you depending on how much you're going to, you know, oh, pay, snap. you're going to get the album. You're going to get the discount codes for his merch. You're going to get a music video. You're going to get a documentary narrated by Royce to find nine, uh, Royce to five nine. And possibly if you're lucky, even a signed CD. Fuck. I hope I get one of those CDs. I ain't going to lie, bro. <laughs> but enough about me blathering. Let's get this legend on here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining the show again for the sequel, Jan Freeman, a.k.a. Jan Mogul Con Freeman, a.k.a. John Connor, a.k.a. the people's rapper, the best in the world at what he does. Let him talk to you. Yeah. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Sir, how are you? Man, I'm blessed, man. Thank you for that amazing intro. I am humbled. I am honored to be here, man. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for being so kind, man, for real. 
Hey, woosa, woosa. It's about to get gruesome, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Because this shit a dub. You hear me, John? A dub. You got a Thank dub you. on your hands right now, man. Thank I, so, you. I don't want to waste any of your time. Let's just get into it. So first question, are you okay, sir? Because you went fucking crazy on this album. Are you okay? <laughs> um, yes, I'm good. I'm good. Spiritually, I'm good. Mentally, I'm good. I'm in a good. I'm in a good space, man. Like, thank you for asking that, man. You don't often get asked if you're okay in interviews, so I really appreciate you asking that. But yes, yeah, so I'm good, man. I'm blessed, and um, just thank you so much, man, for the love, and, and thank you for receiving the album as it was intended, man. Oh, would you? Uh, would you prefer that I go back into traditional uh, interviewing style? How about this? How about this? You want me to try this out? <laughs> So uh, uh, what was it like to uh, meet Eminem? Did you ever meet Eminem? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Definitely don't need to do that, man. Yeah, I believe that skit ended with fuck you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And the funny part, it, the the main thing about that skit was pretty much, you know, um, you know, nothing against that portion of my life, but it's like, you know, getting asked the same question over and over and over again. It's like, you know, if you want to know those answers, much like you said at the beginning of the, of the intro here, you know, I got heli interviews where I talk about that portion of my life. It's like, if you're going to ask me about it, at least ask me some different questions. It was just like, yo, and so much more has happened in my life and in hip hop since then. It's like, there's, you know, we missing out on just a, a wealth of, you know, my perspective on different things. And if you keep asking the same questions, I'm going to keep giving the same answers. Answers what makes for a boring interview. So it was just like, yo, let's, you know, this this is like, it was funny because on that skit is like my answer to that question. That's what my answer is going to always be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, you can listen to the album if you want to know my answer to that particular question. You did? Dude, yeah, that when I heard that skit, I was just like, you know, I'm glad that I'm like naturally just I'm I'm a weirdo, dude. Like I don't even uh, even when we chopped it up the first time, I don't know if you remember, like, yeah, I asked you about your come up and your inspirations and we got into Master P a little bit, but like, but I didn't, you know, I didn't ask about Dre. All I said was like, Hey, this dude like met with Dre, you know, chopped it up with Dre. Like I I don't like getting down like that. I, I I don't know. One, I think there's more interesting shit. And then like you said, like so much has happened. Like the world is, I don't know about you, but I feel like the world just going much faster than it was even five, 10 years ago. You I think? agree. Yes. I want to tell I want to. I wanted to tell you, so me and my boy, uh, we uh, made the trip to the old Miami not too long ago oh old miami and uh you put on a show with uh foul mouth and bizarre which by the way that what a intimate setting i just yes. it the vibe was so awesome whether you were you know you were in the bar or outside the bar the vibe was great everywhere and i i don't know if you remember this you reached out you shook my hand i just want you to know i haven't washed this hand since and i'm thinking about <laughs> stopping it off Framing it, <laughs> chopping this hand off and framing it because, like, I don't know when I'm going to get in touch with greatness again, sir. Like, oh, that man, show was stop crazy. It, stop, it. stop it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I'm humbled by those words, man. Thank you. We had a good time that night, too. Much love to Bizarre and Foulmouth. Foulmouth, who actually produced uh, Worst Day Ever on the album. And Bizarre, we got, we got a couple joints coming up on my next few projects so it's always been love you know that michigan and detroit i mean that flint and detroit connection man you know what i'm saying so it's a, it's a michigan thing so it was dope we had a good time that night too i had a ball man so and thank you for coming like you said it was an intimate setting but i love that venue because like you said whether you outside or inside like how they got the uh speakers on the outside where you can still hear everything that's going on while people are on stage it was just a beautiful night it was nothing but love man so shouts to detroit man like I love anytime I could touch the stage there, man. I'm still fucking kicking myself that I couldn't shake loose for your listening party, man. I get so I just want you to know, like I go to the planetarium just like by my like by myself. Like that's just something I do is like a, a thing to do. And the fact that you had a listening party at a planetarium, sir, like you're just I, 
I hate blowing so much smoke, but you are so unique, so not like you. anybody else. Like, and it's stuff like that that just continues to prove that shit. And if you don't mind, like, how did, did you did you like doing the listening party? There it was like, did I mean just off the chain? Yeah, bro, I loved it. I I wish you could have been there, man. Um, my assistant Lindsay, man, she said. You know, God filled the room that night in the planetarium. Like, it was just such a dope vibe because, you know, at this point, you've heard the album. So then, you know, to imagine listening to that collection of songs while looking at the stars and the planets on the ceiling and just have, you know, it was just a beautiful experience, man. Everybody had a good time. Uh, I greeted everybody at the door with hugs and love. So, you know, it wasn't any awkwardness or weirdness that everybody knew they were coming into an environment where they were welcomed and it was all love and nobody had their nose in the air or it wasn't any type of awkwardness at all. So it was just a, it was a beautiful night, man. Like, honestly, we had such a good time. Like people enjoyed the project. You know, it was cool. I got a standing ovation at the end. I was all, I was super happy, man. So, yes, it was dope. It, and then just the environment of the planetarium set such a mood. I hadn't been to the planetarium since I was a kid, since I took a field trip there, you know, when I was a child. And, like, I think that that in itself makes people put their guard down because immediately when you walk in there, you feel like a kid again. So it was so cool that it was, like, all masks and barriers were put down and taken off and everybody was just in the vibe to just really listen to the album and dissect what they were hearing so it was really cool and that that's so awesome to hear and just awesome that you did that in fact i i was talking to my boy stefan who uh you got to meet uh he also is from toledo and uh came up there and uh you know he just said you couldn't have been nicer and it like just hearing that and hearing about that experience man like you're I, you're just doing it unlike anybody else and i so salty that i i missed out on that um so Let's talk about how you decided to release this album, which I think is different. You know, I kind of mentioned at the top of the show there, you know, it's not streaming numbers. And I don't think many people really know. And, and like I said, we can go ham here, John. Like, I don't give a fuck if you start calling out names. Oh, I don't I don't want you to bring that static on yourself. But like, uh. I don't think people know just how much like those streaming platforms kind of fuck you artists in a lot of sense. Like in 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 the fact that you did it on even dot biz and correct me if I'm wrong, but you put all your money into this like this is. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if we can talk a little bit about that, just the decision to go the route of even dot biz. Well, um, one I wanted one thing I wanted to say is um don't fret man we're gonna do another listening party for the next project so hopefully i want you to come to the next one the and the and the location for the next one i think is gonna be pretty unique as well so i can't wait for it man so hopefully you get to come this summer is going down but um yeah, but I'm the decision ahead. to yeah the decision to uh drop it on even dot biz it's like, man, when you're doing things independent, you paying for everything out of your pocket. You know, you paying for mixing and ma if you care about your music, you want it to sound good. So you got to pay for mixing. You got to pay for mastering. Then you got to pay for the videos. You got to pay for uh, just uh, the artwork for the album. You then uh, to get it on playlists like on these, uh, you know, streaming platforms that cost money. Then you got to pay for the advertising on uh, Instagram and YouTube and whatever. So it's like, as an independent artist, and I'm sure all independent artists know, there comes a point where it almost feels like you're putting more or investing more than you're getting back from it. Now, for an artist like me, uh, it's not all about financial gain. For me, like my currency is the fact that I can help people through my gift. But at the same time, you know, you have to have the finances to keep doing that on the level that you would like to do it on. So it was just like, OK like cool it's like let me try this out because with streaming you get a third of a penny and i don't even think people can fathom how little of a you don't even get a full penny you know i was thinking about that that you know one time i was talking to my assistant and i said this is crazy i said if somebody was to give me one dollar for my whole album that's more than i would get if somebody streamed my whole album so at that point it's like you turn in a profit if somebody just give you $1 or $2, you know what I'm saying? You don't even make that like per stream. 
So it was like uh, I was I started seeing artists that I um that I respect, and I started seeing artists that uh, I came up with like on the platform, like. Dizzy Wright, I see him on there. Um, I even seen uh my guy from New Orleans, D1. I don't think he's on even die biz, but he was doing a direct to consumer um scenario. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try that out. It was like, you know what? I'm the people's rapper. I have a, a fan base of people where I feel like I know them and they know me. So why not cut out the middleman and sell directly to the people who want to support me? You dig? And um, ultimately, it will the albums will come out on streaming services. But I just want to give a little something extra to the people that really support me and are really uh, making the wheels turn as far as me being able to churn out music um, at the level I'm churning it out on at such a consistent basis. I want to say thank you to them. So I want them to be able to have access to the new merch and the, the docuseries. And it's videos that will only ever be on Even Die Biz as my way of saying thank you to them. But that pretty much was what it was. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you you put a lot into the music. So you want to make sure you're being compensated for your work. You know, I've been in situations where you work like a slave, like with music, and then you don't get back what you put into it. And that can kind of be demoralizing if you do anything. You know, yes, you love your craft or whatever it is, but you also want to you don't want to feel like a fool and you don't want to at the end of the day be the starving artist forever so the thing is like i think that even die biz what is a dope platform to kind of like bridge that gap whereas like you know you're not a money hungry person but you still want to be compensated and what better way to do it than to just give directly to the people who want to support you uh did you find it a little bit um or do you find it rather is it a little bit more exhausting to go this route in terms of promoting yourself all the time because i i can't i won't speak for you but for me so the number one thing i hate about doing this show is the constant i mean you mentioned it on your album several times hitting that algorithm like it's just not in me to do that like right. I, i'm not gonna be constantly posting and, <laughs> right. and, and i don't right. you know and i don't and i i probably should more now this is my fault because like let's be let's be clear like the the fact that social media exists, it's another avenue to get your stuff out there. But I don't think what people talk about all uh, enough is just how hard it is to find that rhythm. And for me, like, so one little fact about me, not that you care, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I've never, oh, I, I care, man. <laughs> not, I've never once on my show, not once ever asked you to like, or subscribe. Never. I won't mm. do never going to do it. And, and it's, and I kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. Like, I don't, I don't like promoting myself like that. So did you, do you find it a little bit more tedious to have to kind of do it on your own or do you kind of, cause I know you, you interact with the fans all the time. So it, mm -hmm. is it easier because like you have a genuine love from the fans instead of like this hollow, whatever, or is it still like, no nah, man, I, I hate doing this shit. No, nah, you hit the nail on the head. I genuinely like and love people. So for me, you know, what what um what classifies as promotion for me is just interacting with humans and me being grateful to them for supporting whatever it is that I do. I'm not a big poster, you know what I'm saying? Like like I don't post a lot and stuff. So that part of it is hard. Like when I have to continuously like post about like, you know, the album is out now or whatever the case may be. But as far as like interacting with humans, like I dig that, you know, I like breaking down that wall between the artist and the supporter, because I just want people to know that, you know, I'm just a human just like them. And my whole existence is um, to keep chasing my dream to inspire people to chase theirs. You know what I'm saying? So that part of it is cool. But yeah, the whole like posting every day and stuff like my assistant Lindsay, she be having to stay on me about stuff like that because that that's not naturally who i am i don't really like i don't like to be on social media all day and all that type of stuff and then she you know she got to remind me you got to go live you got to talk about the album you got to and that part is a little um out of my element but you know what i'm saying but as far as the interaction with other people i dig it man i really do man like being a being able to inspire people and to uh you know just shed a little light in people's lives just by communicating with them i've always dug that but like no it's not my nature to just 
you know, post and tweet and all of that. So I, I it definitely takes a little bit to do that, but I don't mind doing it because I'm a, I'm the type of person that's like, um, you get out of a situation what you put into it. So it's like, okay, if this is what comes with the job, then I guess that's what I got to do, you know? I uh, I also got to tell you, like, you, you talk about interacting with fans. It never ceases to amaze me just the lack of satisfaction amongst people. So, like, yeah. and I don't want you to comment on it. I don't want you taking digs on anybody. So I'll do it for you. I find it fucking outlandish that people are going to go to even.biz, get in your chat, and just start complaining right out the jump. Like, I don't I don't get this anymore. Like, you get, you your, your money is supporting the artist directly, and you're in the fucking chat talking about, oh, I would have, I would have did the, the mix a little bit better than this, and I would have did the mastering. Yeah, yo, John, if you want to uh, start up a dialogue and talk about it. I'm like what the fuck are we doing here like <laughs> like it's not good enough that you're give he first of all 21 tracks sir 21 20 like and you're gonna get on the chat and be able to talk to this man directly and you're gonna bitch and complain I don't I don't understand man it don't so I'll just tell fuck those people dude you're gonna get <laughs> you have you have John uh, you know you did that live chat on even dot biz the other day and for the most part let's be real for the most part it's all love you know what I'm saying but there still are those people that have to I don't I don't even know what to call it anymore like just disingenuous it just it's it's stupid dude like you're that's crazy because i got on there a little late like you know what i'm saying so i didn't even see all that see god be saving me from the negativity because i didn't even see it like you know what i'm saying by the time i got on there uh it was people saying uh, you know positive stuff about what songs they like and stuff like that but man i just learned man you know first of all music and art is subjective you know everybody gonna feel like this should be like this, that should be like that. At least you're talking about it. You know, at least you listen to it. And, you know, uh, if you don't like this one, maybe you'll like the next one. I, I, Man, being in this business for so long, bro, I got such thick skin. Like, I really don't, I don't, honestly, I don't even pay attention to, like, negativity or comments or stuff like that. One time I had a conversation with Terry Crews and he told me, he said, John, if you're going to listen to the negative things people say about you and believe it, then that he said, if you listen to the positive things people say about you, then that means you have to believe the negative things that people say about you. He says, so the easy way out of that is just don't listen to anything negative or positive at all. He said, the art should come from your heart. Like whatever you felt about it, when you put it out, that's the truth because like everybody's going to have an opinion. So if you're going to get super happy when somebody says you did great, then that means you have to lend yourself to being super depressed when somebody says something negative. So honestly, I take all comments with a grain of salt. I appreciate, you know, my outlook on it is as long as you're talking about it, as long as you gave it your time, that was the point, you know, and hopefully it intrigues you enough to come back to listen to whatever the next one is and whatever your gripe was about that one. And hopefully it'll suffice. And, you know, on the next one, you know, you won't, you know, we'll get it right on the next one, whatever that is. But it's art at the end of the day. You know, like you can look at it and you can talk about the mixes or I should have said this or what metaphor was that and all that. And man, that ain't, you know, another thing I'll say without just rambling uh, on and on. But I remember the director, Joel Schumacher, said that the art is only yours while you're creating it. You know what I'm saying? And after you create it and give it to the people, it belongs to the people. So that guy that feels like certain songs could have got mixed differently, that's his experience with the art. That's how he feel about it. Like, I could look at a painting and be like, man, they should have used a different type of blue on the sky. That's my opinion. It's art. It's subjective. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I don't look at positive or negative comments and take either to heart. I'm just grateful that people pay attention at all. Uh, you mentioned Terry Crews there and, and we can just cause, uh, John, as you've been on before, this is kind of spoiler free. I don't, I don't like deep diving into stuff. I want to for, I, I, I want our passion to get people to go and seek it out themselves. Yeah. So I, I, I won't, I won't, uh, ruin too much, but you mentioned Terry Crews there. So I watched the documentary, first of all, phenomenal, like in terms of, of how it's done and how it's executed, you got your mom on there, your dad on there, your friend. Terry Crews exhibit Dre DJ Pooh and more and more and more and narrated by one of my favorite lyricists of all time which is the five nine Royce the five nine and so seeing that complete project 
were you just blown away at just the sheer quality of it? Any anything really? Well, man, shouts to my guys, our true group, uh, Pata and Mac. They're based out of Long Beach. They, man, they've done so much dope stuff. And we met during, uh, I think I was, excuse me, I think I was doing like an interview for like BET or something back in the day. And they were the, the crew of people that um, were filming me. And we just had such a good rapport with each other. And I started telling them my story and what I wanted to do as far as having a docu-series and a documentary and all of that type of stuff. And they really loved the idea of it. So I got to give them their props on the execution of it because all of their work is super duper amazing. Um, But yeah, like when I saw it and how it was coming out, I was blown away. Like the intro, when it says like the road to legendary and all of that stuff. It was like, oh, snap. Like I was I was really happy and satisfied with how it came out. And it, it was cool. It was um, uh, I don't know if my response right now is um, coming off as excited as I truly was <laughs> there because I really was super duper excited when I saw it. And I'm just glad that people are getting to see that, like, and, you know, know my story. And so, yes, it's it's actually very humbling to have these people that I grew up admiring and respecting. Like I say, uh, Terry Crews being from Flint, you know what I'm saying? And, and all of the amazing things that he's done in show business, uh, lending his opinion and perspective on uh, the part of my journey that he witnessed and Chris Weber and, you know, all of those people, man, it's really humbling, man. Yeah, I like it's so cool that you're giving the fans like this. It, I mean, it, like there's home video of you, dude. Like we're getting a special glimpse into your life that I don't think we've ever really got the opportunity to see. So I really hope people go out to even dot biz uh, pitch in so that if for nothing else, just so you can see, you know, kind of where you started. I mean, your sister telling story, your mom and your sister telling stories about how you were kind of quiet a little bit. And then when that music hit, like something switched in you, like that's the, yeah. I love that shit. I love like where, where that moment is where you just are like, you know what? And then you're going to other schools, pulling people's cards straight up. You know? <laughs> like, like, and I don't want to give any that too much away, but I'm just saying like, you don't, that this is an, I, I really hope people go to the site and, and if for nothing else, you know, see it like, I, well, and let's go back to the album a little bit. So there was something I did want to tell you. So one of the things that you wrecked me, okay. I don't, I'm not going to go into it completely, but I'm going to say you wrecked me with a line that I was just like, this dude is a, I said it on the first show that we did. We thought your perspective is second to none, sir. Like, I, I think wow. like there's some people out there, like we, we, we be thinking it, you know what I'm saying? But being saying it is one thing, but saying it with the conviction that you do, like, I, I, I really hope like cult of Jan starts coming around, you know what I'm saying? So, because, <laughs> because like one of the things you said is your vibe is kindness. You know, how many rappers are out there saying my vibe is kindness, dude? No, it's fuck bitches kill, you, you know, and it's, I, and it's not to say that, you know, these rappers that are like, fuck bitches, kill motherfuckers, whatever, that, that there's not a place for that. But I, I, it's, how do I say this? Like I said, this is organic, John. We don't cut. How do I say this? The fact that you're going as hard as you do, and yet it's all about love. That's so unique. I don't even, I don't even think, you know, you know, like just the wow. two of them where you're just going, ba 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 But wait a minute. Is he talking about love? right now you know <laughs> you. you know and that's just we don't we don't get that very often so the the line one of the lines there's many lines and i wrote a bunch down but i'm not gonna fucking bore you with your own shit no nah, it's all good it's love, man. <laughs> uh we suffer in silence karma yeah. ain't bias it just reminds us whatever vibe we embody the balance is right behind us one more time we suffer in silence Karma ain't biased. It just reminds us whatever vibe we embody, the balance is right behind us, sir. God damn, dude. <laughs> like, I don't Thank like, you. there's so many. There's what's the one that you like? Uh, there was one in here where I literally, oh shit, the one on I'm sorry and you deserve it. Nowadays, I feel the weight of every heartbreak I've been a part of. I don't know why. I think it's just because what I'm going through in my own fucking shit right now. You, you wrecked me. You wrecked me. I went, damn it. He's right. 
<laughs> he's fucking <laughs> right. I hate it, but he's right. <laughs> Man, when you just brought up that line from uh, that's heaven sent evidence, right? That first line that you uh, yes, sir. Bro, the fact that that line resonated with you means a lot to me because I feel like sometimes when the lines aren't as uh, braggadocious, right? You know what I'm saying? Or it's not some, you know, just crazy metaphor or something like that. Sometimes people don't realize how heavy, you know, some of the, these lines can be. That was a line that I was really proud of. Like once, you know, not in like an arrogant way, but it was like, I'm happy that I get to say that. You know what I'm saying? And I thank and you. Believe for it. It's not a show. Like I know when you're saying it, you believe it. It's not just this. It's I, I think a lot of times we have a lot of throwaway lines and you're not doing well. You you just don't do that in general. But that like it's I know without having even talked to you right now, you felt that shit. Absolutely. 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 That was a lot of things on this project was near and dear to me that um uh, you know, when it's all said and done, because we all got an exit date from this planet, I'll be happy knowing that there's music around where my voice is still saying these things, that some generation of kids are going to find this music and, and that, you know, I'll be there still saying these words. And that's, you know, the cool thing about three for me, like I've been telling people, this project is a uh, the the embodiment of just where I am as a human and spiritually and mentally and just my outlook on life and it's like no disrespect to none of my older music but I feel like I was still immature in a lot of ways and still trying to find myself and you know how to use my gift for the greater good I think three is the one that I'm most proud of that like yep if if uh if I was to you know, whenever my checkout date is, I, my spirit is at peace knowing that three exists and people will know that this is what I thought. And and thank you for bringing that line up on I'm sorry as well, because it that's true. It's like these things are my truth. Like I really do. The older I get, I think about things like that. Like, you know, am I the guy that's used as an example when a mother tells her daughter that you can't trust men. You know what I'm saying? And is she basing that off of the days where I was immature? So, you know, it's just really cool for me to be able to put those things out there, man, and uh, kind of kind of check myself and take accountability for things that I've done. I'm glad that you brought that up because I thought this might have been close to one of your most realist and personal projects to date. I mean, you have a whole track of basically just saying, like, I wasn't ready. Like I wasn't ready to, to do, I wasn't ready to be faithful. I wasn't ready to do that whole thing. And I think you are like, the truth is cut into the bone. You know, I'm like, Oh my God. Like he, he's straight up just telling this old, old girl, like, yo, I wasn't ready. I'm sorry. And just as men in general, I don't think that we do that enough. You know, there's, yeah. it, it is a very toxic thing that we do these days where it's just kind of like, uh, it's almost like forgettable. And, the, and I, I'm not going to ask you because that's too personal, but I would assume this relationship happened a long time ago and you owning up to that. Like I, I don't people, this man, this man bears his soul and is in this album, even dot biz dot biz. So thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It took, you know, the fun, funny thing about it is uh, to write these songs. I had to go through it. You know what I'm saying? To be able to have perspective and accountability means I had to endure it at some point in my life. And I chose not to not to become one of them dudes that was like bitter or angry. It's like everything is a lesson at the end of the day that hopefully somebody listened to it can either identify it and change their ways so they don't have to go through what I went through. Or, you know, they can um, find some comfort in knowing that they're not the only one. Because sometimes when we make mistakes we feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders. Like we the only person that ever made that mistake, you know, and we not, you know what I'm saying? But I hope that I can be an example of, you know what, you made that mistake, take accountability and just try to be the best you moving forward. Yeah. I, there's so many lines cut deep. So let's, 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 let's get out of the sad era and we'll, we'll kind of okay. wind, wind this interview down a little bit. First, I want to tell you, I think one of my favorite tracks on it, just because you, you were just being you it's Harvey two face with uh, hey. Bill Johnson. 
holy cow, dude, you went so not only were you so goddamn real on this one, but you went so hard. And I don't know who that lady was on the track gassing you up. <laughs> but Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> what what was the name of that? Who's who is that? Just gassing you up like this. I mean, fuck these people just going ape shit. Wish you went crazy, huh? Yes. So it was it's a young lady named Alexis, right? And she don't rap, she don't do none of that type of stuff. But like one time I heard her cussing, telling a story, and I'm like, yo, you you I, I was thinking to myself, her voice embodied first of all, Flint, and it embodied my frustration. And so it was cool to be able to use her as an instrument for myself. Like she said, so the whole the whole point of the Harvey Two-Face song, and I, I hate to break songs down like this because I really try to make it to where I leave it to the interpretation of the listener, but I got to on this one, right? So with Harvey Two-Face, if people are familiar with Batman and Harvey Dent and Two-Face, right? Um, and I'll just reference the Dark Knight, okay? Harvey Dent was genuinely a good dude. He really wanted to see change. He was willing to risk his life, you know what I'm saying, for change in Gotham City. But nobody listened to him. And as a result of nobody listening to him, excuse the expression, he got fucked. Like, you know what I'm saying, in the process. His trying to be Mr. Nice Guy end up fucking his life up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you remember that part when he was talking to uh, Commissioner Gordon in the hospital? And he like, well, yeah. no. At, you know, at the end, when he was like, why would you listen to me now? And then at the end, when he was like, why was I the only one that lost everything? You know what I mean? He was the best of them, right? So with this particular song, it's like, it's almost, like I said, me taking accountability on every song. But with Harvey Two-Face, it's like the part of me now that looks back at the old me that was trying his best. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like to tell people <laughs> to do the right thing. And it's like, there's a part of me that starts to be like, well, you know what? Fuck it. Y'all keep saying there's no hip hop artists out here trying to do right or do this. Or there's no good messaging in music. And then there's that frustration. So throughout the record, it's almost you're listening to Harvey Dent rationalize becoming Two-Face. You know, I talk about at the beginning, uh, growing up in Flint, Michigan, and trying to be, you know, the opposite of what people paint Flint to be, this violent, dangerous place. And through my art, I was trying to try something different. And, you know, okay, they didn't, they said, okay, Connor, the city don't want that. They want killing, they want murder. So, okay, you get to the second verse where I talk about my experiences in the music business, where it's like, okay, I did everything you said. I was humble, I was kind, I shook hands, I kissed babies. I never got in no drama. And it's like, you're you listening, when that, that deeper voice is coming in, it's almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. You still there? Oh, yeah. Which I yes, I'm still here. And it is a Dr. Okay. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing you and I think you do that a few times on this album. Which, Absolutely. Which I love. This album plays like a movie. Like first you got the THX uh, sound uh, yes. to open the album. And then you got like the old school da -da 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 as you close yes. out the feature presentation yes. QT style, Quentin Tarantino style. And I'm like, Man, <laughs> yes, just, yes. I love this dude so much. <laughs> Man, thank and I'm a big Tarantino fan, bro. So it's like, so by time on that particular record, it's like when you get to the part where the young lady is talking and she, I'm tired of you going light on them and blah, blah, blah. That's when uh, artistically I've made the full transition from being Harvey Dent to now I'm Two-Faced. Now it's just, I don't care. I, I'll let this girl cuss on the song because that's what y'all want. This is my frustration. You turn me into this person to where now she represents the two-faced part of me, where it's like, I don't care how it comes out. She's saying how I really feel, you know what I'm saying? And, and using the words that I wish that I, but it's like, you know, I'm, I, I like to think that I'm a pretty nice guy. So sometimes it doesn't come out like, like how she said it, but it's like, I was so happy to have her do that because it was I as she was doing it I was so happy like yes that is the exact embodiment of how I want to say that shit and she said it she embodied it to a T so that was the whole story of Harvey Two Face of me trying to be a certain way for so long 
and then finally just saying, fuck it. Okay, you turned me into this person to where now I will cuss and I don't care. And now I'm so frustrated and y'all are going to feel me one way or another, man. Dude, you, you, you're talking about Two-Face. You went after people on this one, like subtly, but you went after the industry. You went at, like, you were vague, but like talking about, Oh shit, man! You had the one line uh, like rappers and hoopers share wives and shit like that, bro. You fucking, I. There was a couple times I went, oh boy. I hope like you know, <laughs> like like people like the the snakes don't come after you. And what I'm saying, the ones that you don't see, I'm not talking about fucking people coming after you on social media. Can you? Blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about like, hey, there's two black cars sitting outside of my fucking house right now with fucking mm -hmm. two black SUVs because you. You, you I, listen. I don't want to spoil. I, I said I wasn't gonna spoil anything, so I'll just leave it at that. Just say that he went after some people. So let's rein it a little uh, back, a little bit happier. You had a club join on this one, John. Well, wait before you go on to okay, that. Okay, one, okay, like, okay. Like, cause yeah, cause I do want to talk about the greatest show on earth. Um, I think that people have such a uh uh fascination and damn near obsession with show business that they forget that these people are just human. So more than it being, you know, me attacking certain people, it was, I think that there's just a whole culture in show business that I was attacking. You know what I'm saying? And whoever falls under that umbrella, maybe they should take a look in the mirror. Like, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is like, I think that's why I didn't like name names or nothing like that, because I, I didn't have any one person in particular in mind. It was, this is a whole culture that they are subscribing to. You know what I'm saying? That 88 or to 99% of show business is engaging in this. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, my thing is, I'm just all about uh, the moralities of right and wrong. And, you know, I don't care. I'm just standing up for truth. And I can't, I can't care if truth offends people. You know what I'm saying? I can't care if fighting for what's right hurts somebody's feelings. If it hurts your feelings, then maybe you should take a look at what you're doing and reevaluate the decisions that you're making. Because nothing like rappers and hooper, uh, rappers and hoopers want each other's lives. Rappers and hoopers fuck each other's wives. If it make you uncomfortable when I say that, if you're a rapper or a hooper, evaluate the decisions that you make. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like reevaluate these decisions. You know, I'm. You know, it, it goes to the thing is like, are they, um, is it wrong for them doing it or is it wrong for me pointing it out? Man, my mother always used to say like, um, don't do things that you're going to be ashamed of. If you're ashamed of doing something, then don't do it. Like if some, if somebody calls you out on something in, in like public for something that you did, and if you're ashamed when they talk about it, then don't, that that's a telltale sign that you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. So for me, I just wanted to kind of let people see behind the curtain where it's like, you know, you idolizing these people who got flaws and demons that they dealing with, you know, stop putting these celebrities. I don't even like the word celebrity, but it's like stop putting these people who have notoriety for their gifts on such a pedestal that they're almost inhuman. They're just as human as you. They make mistakes. You know, they have insecurities. They make good decisions, bad decisions. But I think we should get out of this kind of like idol worship culture for uh, people who are in show business. That's all I'm, I'm you know, wanted to accomplish with, with Greatest Show on Earth, where it's like, yo, these people are humans just like you. So more than anything, more than trying to, you know, go at them and make people feel bad. It's just like, I'm just telling the truth about what I saw, you know, or what I, I know to be true about show business and now that we have in dialogue about it it's like so what are we gonna do about it is is the type of thing what what are like i should hope like a quote unquote celebrity here's greatest show on earth and it makes them it's like this bro the same way that you said thank you i'm sorry uh, well i'm sorry you deserve it made you feel and it kind of made you evaluate your decisions that's what this whole album is doing just in different you know, uh, people with different lifestyles. It's like, okay, that makes you look at yourself and your decisions from the perspective of how we treat women. Uh, greatest show on earth should make an entertainer look at themselves as to how they treat each other and, you know, what images that they're putting out there. I think that each song in its own way was kind of trying to accomplish the same point. 
make whatever situation you in evaluate your decision making skills and are you doing what's right for the greater good and i think greatest show just did that and put the mirror in front of entertainers and also kind of was trying to make the average person like stop idol worshiping these people who are just normal people just like you I mean, and that's that's why I said the black SUVs, dude, you didn't call out just any one person. You called out an entire industry. That's why I I just I'm like, man, I hope John's all right. Hope I hope they got the bulletproof vin windows in there. You don't. Yeah, man. People, man. So I'm good, man. Just keep me in your prayers. God got me, man. I'm protected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, so my boy was actually telling me that uh, somebody in, in uh, forgive me, I uh, forgive me, Stefan. I know I'm not going to tell the story right, but he was talking to you at your release party and somebody was saying, why don't you ever have any club beats on your album? And that's how Celebrate came to be. Is there any truth to that? Well, yeah, not so much club, but it was like uh, Celebrate came about because I thought it was a friend of mine. His name DJ Hype, longtime friend of mine. And he was DJing at like this picnic and I went to it and I was like, man, I don't have like a picnic song. I don't got like a song you could play in front of your grandma and your, you know what I'm saying? And like the kid from everybody from the kids to the uncles to the aunties to the grandparents can all just kind of vibe to it without kind of uh you know being concerned about if i'm about to cuss or say something you know that's out of the way so i always wanted to just have something that you could roller skate to play at the barbecue and stuff like that so celebrate came because i felt like damn i wish dj hype could play some of my music in this environment so it made me make celebrate absolutely Oh, that's what he fucking said. He said a track that you could play at the barbecue fuck i, I should yeah it's all good it's all good <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I am going to get you out of here. I've already kept you a little long, but I have two very important questions. But first, what I wanted to tell everybody again, I know I've mentioned it several times here on the show, even.biz, even.biz, please go there, support John Connor. I got the album. I got a hoodie, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pissed, dude. The hoodie is out for delivery right now. I wanted uh -huh. to hear it for this show, and I was oh, like, oh, man. Fuck, man. Dude, I got that white hoodie with the, like, Velociraptor three in it oh, yeah dude that's fire i got that and then the cd just go go show your love for this man the, the money is going directly to him now Thank i you. always do this shit where like we listen we talked about the album a little bit we talked about the documentary a little bit mm -hmm. i now i have some hard-hitting questions for you they're gonna make you squirm john let's do it before you do that though yeah you brought up the merch I love the the Velociraptor three shirt. I like the the popcorn movie one too. Like I think that's cool just because it plays into the whole theme of the whole album. And it was another uh oh the red people's rapper shirt is I really dig that one too. So yeah, y'all go check out the new merch at Even Dive Biz. It's some cool stuff on there, man. Yeah, man. And the, uh, you got a really big selection for just rolling this new merch out. You, you and I talked at uh, Christmas and I was like, actually, the dude that you met for Christmas, I had actually bought him one of your old black, just black John Connor shirts. And you were like, yo, sorry, it's taking a, a little bit. We got new merch on the way. And like, I think you have like three, four times as much as what you initially had. Yep. And, you know, I'm just I'm I'm just a poor boy. I'll I'll start. I'll collect them all. I'll collect them all. <laughs> I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you for that, man. Thank you personally for popping like that package to get the merch and the docuseries. Thank you so much, man. Hey, I, I wouldn't do it. It's all love, baby. Like, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like I, I always do this where like uh independent artists like i will do whatever is in my power i donate to kickstarters for movie like i i just down the list and like even with you like i can remember pushing play on your albums and then just letting it play so that you get those streaming numbers and so because wow. i I knew beforehand and uh, people call me weird all the time for doing that. They're like, Hey, music's coming out of your pocket. What are you, what are you doing? I'm just like, no, I got to get my, I got to get my boys, my girls, their, feet, their views, because you don't know what he, you do. You don't really know what the contract is like with some of these fucking platforms. So absolutely. I, I do that all the time. Now, I, one of my you. friends actually shit on me about it. He's like, well, you're, you're, 
you're kind of doctoring the numbers. And I was like, well, wait a minute. No, because if his if my plays are helping him get more money, then that's when I, or the, he, she, whoever it may be, get more money. Then that's all I fucking care about, because like I I'm a struggling independent screenwriter that wants to make movies. I hope people will afford me the 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 same um, ideology and just be like, listen, he put his first movie up on YouTube. We're just going to play it over and over. So it hits that fucking algorithm with mm-hmm. you know, like we talked about it, like it, it's a blessing and a curse, this social media. So it is. And you know what? Just to add to that, thank you so much for doing that, because. Bro, you doing that, you know, to your friend's comment when you say you're doctoring the numbers, man, They what they don't understand is that record labels have these things called bot farms. Do you know what that is? Where they literally have like damn near warehouse size buildings that have a fucking thousands of cell phones that are playing like signed artist music. Like how you said you doing it on your phone where you just were playing it all night. They have like warehouses where there are thousands of phones playing these signed artist music like over and over. So they're doctoring the numbers as well. You know, so if, you know, any any fan like you that wants to support like that, I appreciate that because artists like myself, we're up against a machine of corporations that have millions of dollars to do stuff like having bot farms where they have these doctored up numbers where these thousands of cell phones are playing these songs. It's not even like real people listening to these songs. That's why some of these artists, when you see like they just reached 4.5 billion streams, that's not real people. You know what I'm saying? It's, It's like eight or nine bot farms with thousands of cell phones that are playing these songs over and over and over. So I just thank you so much for doing that, man, because that means well, a lot. Five billion people don't even have the fucking internet. So, you know, exactly. like it, it, it's it, it's crazy to me because I had heard about the bot farms before. And it's just like, what are, what are we doing? What are we what doing? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Um. All right. All right. The, <clears throat> the hard okay, the hard hitting questions. <clears throat> the hard hitting questions. OK, you ready? Yes. Do you have any predictions for WrestleMania? Oh, my God. I can't even believe you just asked me that. Bro, uh, first of all, hashtag we want Cody, bro. Like, (laughs) yo, bro, I woke up this morning talking about this because I'm so pissed at what it seems like WrestleMania 40 is about to be. Uh, So your question is, do I have any predictions for WrestleMania 40? Yes. Like, yeah, hashtag we want Cody, bro. I'm I'm one of those fans who are, like, extremely pissed off that – um and, and I, I want to make it clear. It's nothing against The Rock. It's the fact that I've been invested in Cody Rhodes' story for two years now. You know what I'm saying? So then for The Rock to just come out of nowhere and now it's him versus Roman at WrestleMania – just something don't this, – this, this feels very Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 9-ish. This feels very Batista coming back in 2013 and taking that spot from Daniel Bryan-ish. Like, that's what it feels like, and I think that's what all of the fans feel like. So what I'm hoping happens is that the backlash from this whole Rock versus Roman thing is so crazy that they have no choice but to put uh, Cody Rose in the main event in, like, some type of three-way. That's what I hope it happens at WrestleMania. But what from what where we stand right now, um, it's looking like Roman versus Rock. And honestly, I'm so disappointed that that's the main event. I don't even care who wins. Uh, Cody Rose versus Seth Rollins is what it looks like it's gonna be. And I just hope Cody wins whatever whatever situation he's in at WrestleMania because he deserves it. Not just from a storyline standpoint, but in real life, like he deserves it. And I think. That is why the fans are in such an uproar is because we know too much of Cody's real life. And we know that the guy, not the American nightmare, the character, the guy, Cody Rose, deserves like to have that moment in the sun. So I really hope that, you know, whatever Cody Rose does, I hope that he wins and gets the confetti coming down at WrestleMania and all of that stuff. He, I mean, he definitely deserves it. I'm sure you watched the documentary on the right. I watched the documentary, bro. Like we all watched Cody's story in real time. We watched him have to be stardust and suck 
Like when people when he was coming out and getting no reaction and he was stardust, but he was giving his all. Like, and we knew he deserved better. Then we watched him leave WWE, go back and wrestle for independent like uh federations and wrestle in high school gyms and wrestle for smaller, like he was like in TNA at one point, I think. And then he went, then we watched him create a whole nother company that became viable competition for WWE. It then was he you know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. He created the competition for WWE, leaves AEW, goes back to WWE. Bro, he tore his pec and then was in hell in a cell with a swollen, bruised pec, bro. And, bro, that was unbearable to watch. We watch him do that. He goes through that. He rehab, come back at the Royal Rumble, wins the Royal Rumble, loses at WrestleMania. <laughs> WrestleMania, bro. Then we watch him start the road to getting back to the WrestleMania main event. Listen to me, man. He beat Brock Lesnar twice, right? They had three matches. But hear me out. Anytime any wrestler faces Brock Lesnar, you are getting your ass whooped in real life. So we watched Cody Rhodes get his ass beat in real life three times by Brock Lesnar to the point Brock finally respects him, holds his hand up, we believe now. Cody deserves it. We watched Cody be a company guy. Win the Royal Rumble again. Bro, the only person in what, like 25 years to win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles. And then this is the part that really pissed me off, bro. He pointed at Roman Reigns at the end of the Royal Rumble. <laughs> yo, he like, yo, okay. So we excited. We happy. Only to... Only to give it to The Rock, like all of that buildup for two years, bro. Not even two years. All of that buildup, bro, like over all of that time. Can you still see me? Yes, I still got you. Okay, because somebody was calling me. But all of that buildup, bro, just to give it to somebody else, this, this is like crazy. I have not been this disappointed in a long time from a decision that they made behind the scenes. So... I truly hope that WWE make it right. They could have did Rock versus Roman at SummerSlam. They could have did it at next year's WrestleMania. They could have made The Rock like the special guest referee. And somehow it was because of The Rock that Roman loses. Now you got a whole year to build up to WrestleMania 41. Then we would have actually cared about The Rock versus Roman. Everything. Then that would have been the perfect build to Cody versus CM Punk at WrestleMania 41. And then Rock and Roman. This is crazy. Like, this don't make sense to me. Yeah, no, I, all, of, I, all of that I agree with. And, like, it needs to be Cody that beats Roman. Like, we were talking yes. about, you, you know, they, they almost got me at Royal Rumble, John. They, they when, uh, when those three RKOs came out of nowhere, I went, no way. Roman Roman's going to lose right now. We just right. got it. And of course, you know, that didn't happen. And then I was talking to my buddy about it, which it doesn't matter, but just like, it's got to mean more if you're going to beat Roman because he's been a champion for so long. Three and years, bro. I think we going into the fourth year. Can you believe that in this day and age? That's wild to me. In a day where like wild. on to the next thing, on to the next thing, we still have a champion that's been around for four years. Like I'm actually really surprised that they haven't split, split that up, but I'm all with you on that. Like, don't get me wrong. We are, if, if you, if you were a wrestling fan from the jump since you were young, everybody loves the rock. Nobody, you know, right. nobody's, nobody's discounting that. And I think we're not talking about it enough out there. Yeah. There was backlash, but it goes to show you the purists are like, no, 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 no. Like it, we need to have Cody because that makes the most sense. He, we, like you said, we watched his rise, fall, rise again in real time, which we don't normally get to do him, you know, yep. break a fabe and everything. So, uh, but yeah, so I just, that was one. And then I just have a second question. That's not going to be near entertaining, but as you and I bonded over this shit, the last time you were on the show. So yes. I, I want to ask you, is there anything for my fans that you can recommend that you've seen TV show movie wise that you were just like recently that you were just like, God damn. Okay. Um, Hard hitting questions. I told you. It, it is. Cause I really, you know, I love film as much as you, man. Film, pro wrestling and music were my passions growing up. Um, 
first I'll take the easy way out and then I'll think harder about anything new. Recently, I went back and watched Thelma and Louise, which I think is a beautiful movie. Um, I think sometimes I even in music, I'll do this. I'll say something is a perfect song. Like there was nothing like the song Back That Ass Up by Juvenile, right? It's a perfect song. The intro catches you. Juvie's verses are memorable and catchy. Everything about it like flowed together. Like it's a perfect song, right? And that's why people love it so much because you it, you you wouldn't do anything different to back that ass up, right? Because it was perfect. So, uh, and that's just the, off the top of the dome, the song that I can think of as I think is a perfect record. Thelma and Louise is like a perfect movie, bro. And like, I respected it. Like it was a lot more as an adult that I realized about that movie that um, even beyond just what you can see about it just being about two friends. And some people would say, oh, it's a woman empowerment movie. I think it's deeper than that. I think it's about um, how one decision can change your life because there's so many moments in Thelma and Louise where if they had just did one thing different, they wouldn't have had the ending that they had. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so many points in time where it's like, like, think about, um, remember, so you've obviously, you've seen Thelma and Louise. Of course, yeah. Right? Okay, so you remember uh, before the guy does what he does to Thelma, right, in the parking lot, there's a part where Thelma says to Louise, like when Louise is like, hey, I'm gonna go to the little girl's room real quick. I'll be right back. And Thelma's like, hey, I want to go with you. But but Louise didn't hear her. So it's like, if only she would have heard her say, I want to go to the bathroom with you, that would have stopped like everything else from happening in that movie. Man, it's like so many other times in that movie where it was like, oh, shit, this is all about decisions and choices. And if one thing could have went different, it could it could really change the dynamic of an entire scenario. So for anybody who has not watched Thelma and Louise lately, I really recommend going back and watching that. Now I would say so anything new. Um, uh, have, have I seen uh, anything Thelma new? Thelma Louise with John Connor. I'm talking about Thelma and Louise. This is fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> Ridley Scott, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but um, I'm thinking that have I seen anything new? that has impacted, uh, had an impact on me um, far as cinema-wise right now. I'm really trying to think hard because I don't want after this interview to be like, damn, I should have said, uh, but I'm really thinking, um, what is the last movie I've seen? Um, about this, what's the last movie you went and saw in the theater? Is that, that, that should make it maybe easier. What was that movie? It was like a, a movie, it was like a, Scary movie, but it was based off of a video game. Not Silent Hill, no. Nah, uh, it didn't leave. A, it didn't leave an impact on me. I was actually mad that I went and saw it. <laughs> like, no, so I don't want to get him no bad press, so I won't say it. But it was like I, I was underwhelmed. But I'll tell you what I want to see. I want to see American Fiction because that looks dang. really good to me. Yeah, have you saw it? No. So uh, because I live in Toledo, so we're finally getting it next week. I think I've seen all but two of the Oscar nominated movies. One is American fiction and then the other is zone of interest. Um, everything else I thought was really good. But Toledo, we don't have a big film culture, which um, if remember, I was trying to get you down to that small theater to perform for one ah. of the, the movie nights that I was doing because I'm caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. Like I'm, do I want to spend my time digging my heels in and bringing a film culture to this town that doesn't really have one? Um, right. Or is it too much work or whatever? But yeah, because of that, like there's so many movies that New York has seen, Los Angeles has seen that we're not going to get. Like there's one with Tom Hardy out, who's my favorite actor of all time called bike riders that premiered over the summer in Los Angeles. And we actually don't get to see it in Michigan or the Midwest until probably late summer. So it's a year after it's released. So I digress. American fiction, I believe is next week. And I will be going to see that because I've heard nothing but good things. And then another one called zone of interest, but Anyway. Yeah, I want to see it too. It's not here either. Like, so I gotta look up places to go see. Yeah, I got pissed because I'm. It's like you know when the uh, trailer came out in select theaters. 
So it was like I, we didn't have it here either. So I'm still looking for where I can find it. But I did think of a movie, uh, the last good movie I saw. I like uh, Iron Claw, the movie about the Von Erichs. Like I think that was. Did you did you go see that? No, I because I'm we're still waiting for that. So that one actually got um, released in our town. I want to say last week. You want to know what the only showing they were doing? Ten twenty p.m. <laughs> really one showing well not like one showing but like so monday through sunday or sunday to sunday 10 20 p.m and i'm like yo like i i already know about the story of them and like i don't want to go see that at 10 20 because i'm coming home and trying to go to bed after seeing probably the darkest wrestling story you're ever gonna hear and yeah and I just so it, that it that's just me being me like, I, you know, I, I really want to see it. I love wrestling. I love a 24, a 24 can do no wrong. Um, So I will see that. But I don't want to go to bed with the Von Erichs story. Like, <laughs> right. I, I try to go to bed laughing every night. But anyway, anyway, John, thank you so much for coming on. Album three, even dot biz, even dot yes. biz. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you for coming on the show. Continued success, sir. Um, I hope we can do it again. I really absolutely. Do. Let's do it, do man. It. I I'm trying we... to get a pro project out every two months, man. So let's do it again. Hey, man. Hey, appreciate you. I'm gonna chuck you the deuces. I'm gonna get John out of here, you folks. Even dot biz. Please, please go support this man. Like I'm telling you, when I say, uh he is the real deal he like i'm not kidding you the real deal i the perspective is off the chain off the chain his conviction his passion all, i mean can you you had to be able to hear it you had to be able to hear it right like this man there's no lies there's no there's no ulterior motives none of that and, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I continue to follow him and his story. Um, and I'm going to be here till the end, John. I'm going to be here till the end. So uh, even dot biz three. John Connor, three people's rapper, even dot biz, even dot biz. Go over there. Like I said, depending on how you donate, you unlock certain tiers. You unlock certain tiers um, to be able to get his merch get a signed copy of the CD. Uh, I just, I can't thank him enough for coming on the show. Atlas Cinema, I, you know, I told you, might, you know, the, the shows are going to come not as frequently. Like I said, I, I'm only going to do it if I can do shit like this. This is the shit that I don't mind getting up in the morning and doing. So, Atlas Cinema, Jan Freeman, Jan Mogul Connor Freeman, John Connor, People's rapper, best in the world at what he does. Ellis Cinema, we gone. Thank you.